Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Stash, and this is Guy. We put his name first, to make things easier for people. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, so we're going to talk today about uh, about uh, something we've been getting up to recently uh, regarding uh, listening skills. Um, before we really get going with uh, the bulk of the presentation, um, we want to mention. I want to mention something about um, a certain disconnect that there is. Uh, that we've seen before between um, people or uh, between people interested in in learning languages and between uh, people who research languages. So th there seems to not be an awful lot of communication here. Sometimes um, there are certain things. That, um, uh, so so it's it's very interesting to hear people's opinions and uh, it can be very helpful. You know, different things work for different people. But in some cases, there are things that actually have been shown to be very effective, but then no one seems to know about them. Um, so uh, this is basically a description of Guy's worldview, um, <laughs> the, the way he, he sees things. Uh, and and this is roughly the, the structure of our talk, actually. First of all, uh, we'd like to talk about a certain linguistic problem or a problem in learning languages that maybe some of you have had or some of you are familiar with or know people who have had this problem. So uh, first of all, uh, this can be demonstrated by showing you a video. man who went to Malta. One day I'm a going to Malta to big a hotel. In the morning I go down to eat a breakfast. I tell the waitress I want two pieces of toast. She brings me only one piece. I tell her I want two pieces. She said go to the toilet. I say you don't understand. I want to do piss on my plate. She said you better no piss on the plate you son of a bitch. I don't even know the lady and she called me a son of a bitch. Later, I go to eat at the bigger restaurant. The waitress brings me a spoon and a knife, but no fork. I tell her I want a fork. She tell me everyone you want a fork. I tell her you don't understand, I want a fork on the table. She say you better not fork on the table, you son of a bitch. So I go back to my room in a hotel, and there is no sheets on the bed. Call the manager and tell him I want a sheet. He tell me to go to the toilet. I say, you don't understand, I want to shit on my bed. He say, you better not shit on my bed, you son of a bitch. I go to the checkout and the man at the desk said, peace on you. I said, peace on you too, you son of a bitch. I'm going like back to Italy. I'll <laughs> Oh, here we go. Yeah, um, yeah. So uh, maybe some of you have uh, encountered problems like this before, or know people who have encountered problems like this before. Um, I certainly think that. Uh, so um, th this kind of problem has happened to me before. Uh, I I've learned uh, a few languages before, and um, uh, certainly there are times when uh, a, a single uh, cha change of a single sound has been enough to go from a normal situation to a completely ridiculous or quite funny or somewhat embarrassing situation. So uh, we, we've got a, got a few examples for you here. The first example is um, last summer when I was learning Armenian. I know what you're thinking. This is Eastern Armenian. I know we didn't write that on the slide, but you know just to clear that up for everyone. Right. So so when I was um, uh, when when I was learning Armenian uh, last summer, then uh, they had this very ordinary word. Um, oh, it's a lovely thing about Armenian that everything looks like N. So uh, this is <laughs> anyway. Uh, so so um, uh, this this word in Armenian is pronounced vorj, and it simply means that, as in I think that, or it's my opinion that, or, um, uh, or th things of, of that. I'm sorry, uh, that sort of thing. Yeah. So not the last that, uh <laughs> but I think that it's my opinion that so this kind of grammatical word that you'd use all the time. And then occasionally I had uh, I had some I was saying this word vor, and I had some people sort of laugh at me uh, or, or, or sort of feel a you know sort of um, uh, f find this a bit you know for some reason they would laugh in the middle of my sentence and I don't really understand why. Um, and there's this other word which uh, also looks like n n, uh, but if you know the other bit, it's actually vor, and what vor means is a bit different, uh, so you've got to avoid making like this problem, right? You've got, you've got to make sure you say vor and not vor, or otherwise you'll um, be ruder than you intended. Um, so then uh, another example is uh, if you are uh, learning Russian, or uh, then you will, then sometimes you will hear people say things like, um, you know, it w we will sound something like onidiot, 
and you're thinking, and they're saying, on idiot, or an idiot, right? And, and you're thinking, okay, so uh, there's this guy and they think he's an idiot. Right, and you and you're just getting this. Imp this is just the guy in the room, and this overhearing everything, and 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 they're like they're just calling him an idiot. This face. It's like maybe this is like an in joke. Do I have to join in and like provide further insults? Is I'm I'm kind of trying to think. What, you know, what's the social situation here? Something on on idiot, and actually what they're saying is um, on idiot, which is um, he is going. So it's you know I, that's another one which I really had to make sure that I could tell the difference between on idiot and on idiot. Um, hopefully that was fairly accurate uh, in pronunciation. Um, and then just to give a, a, a final example in uh, Chinese, uh, this was actually a rather elaborate conversation I was having. So I was, um, for some reason, about four years ago, uh, I was uh, working, I was doing a kind of internship in a startup juice bar in Shanghai. Don't ask too many questions. Um, <laughs> and, and we wanted to decorate this, this shop. Uh, so uh, and they were thinking, oh, well, what could we do? Maybe we could get a plant. Maybe we'd have a plant in the corner, that would be good. You know, give kind of fresh feeling, you know, fruits and things. Right, so, um, so then what I was saying is, um, I was trying to explain that, you know, if we get a plant, it would be quite simple. You, don't even, you can just get a cutting of a plant. You cut a little leaf off or something, and then you can put it in rooting powder. And then if you put the rooting powder in the soil with the plant, then uh, it will sprout roots. So then, so then you know, that this is a quite a, a good way to, to make a new plant. But I didn't know the word for rooting powder. It was just like, it was on my vocab list, obviously, but like I'd forgotten the word for rooting powder. So, uh, so I was just trying to explain what rooting powder is, and I was saying it's a kind of powder. And the thing is, I, I, I was a little bit unsure about the word for powder. Like that word, it was also, I was kind of, I think it's roughly like this. So I was trying to speak really slowly and really clearly to make my point uh, so that they could, because I hope sometimes, like, oh, maybe if I mispronounce something in Chinese, if I'm really slow and clear, maybe they'll like guess that I meant a slight different pronunciation. So, so I was trying to say, uh, so, uh, you know, what I should have said is, uh, I was trying to say really slowly, like, so that they could, like, really get what I was saying, like, like this, right? Um, but then actually, I, I got the tone wrong. Uh, I didn't, at the time, I was like, I was kind of mm, between two tones, and I just went for one, and it wasn't this one, I actually went for a different one. And I said, um, which, which actually was like, the shit, shit. <laughs> I got this response roughly, and I was like, "Yeah, that the powder causes, yeah, but this, yeah, this is funny, right?" And then yeah, I didn't get it until until a bit later. So, so this is a kind of problem that can happen to to people a lot. You know, you just you get one single sound wrong, you, and it can really change what you're saying and really put you in really silly situations and sometimes it's very important like with the Italian man in Malta that's a good example in English between e and i was his main problem uh, and and you know in, in a whole range of other languages you have these you have these minimal pairs these uh, words that are different only in one small thing and that one small thing might be something that's very difficult for a foreign speaker to hear um, so this is a certain problem uh, that we have in, in this. And now the question is, is there any way that we can, you know, improve uh, our understanding, improve our listening or our production of these sounds, uh, you know, to avoid this problem? So this is where I hand it over to, uh, the, to, to the real linguist, which is Guy. So, um, you might think, well, you know, children pick up these sounds just on their own without having to put any extra effort. They just by hearing the language, they'll learn the different sounds. So we might think, no, why can't I do that? Why can't I just, if I go to the country where they speak it, I'll live there for a while, I'll soak up, you know, immerse myself in the language. You know, the same with children at school. We might have a language exchange to, you know, a school in another country. I'll go there for a week, improve their language. Maybe I'll go there for a week. I'll go for longer. You know, I'm, I'm an adult now. I don't have to do ch what children in school do. I can go there for a month, for a year. You know, why don't we do that? Um, so there's one study that was done th th quite a while ago now, so 1996. They tested Korean speakers living in Australia to distinguish these different, th these different vowels. So examples here, so I don't know if there are any Australians here in the room. So there'd be something, I don't know, um, he'd, hid, hid, had, had, something like that. <laughs> um, so Korean speakers trying to dis distinguish these sounds. And so they tested two groups. There were some um, Koreans who'd been living there for about six months, all of them less than a year and some other Koreans will be living there for at least five years. And the overall accuracy of trying to distinguish these sounds, so I mean, some of them were all right, so heed, they could always tell that one, and ha had, they always could um, 
distinguish that one as well. But for example, the you know the more inexperienced Koreans had a lot of problem distinguishing that um, hid and had. That actually it was pretty much random deciding between these two. And even after five years, you know they'd improved. You can see here's up to ninety percent, but these two they're still you know about a quarter of the time they're wrong. So they've lived there for over five years and they still haven't got the uh, the distinction you know perfectly yet. Um, of course, this doesn't just apply to Koreans in Australia. Right? I mean, there have been other studies looking at other, uh, you know, native languages, French speakers, Spanish speakers, and so on, and living in other countries as well. This is a general problem that even if you go to a country and uh, live there, you won't always learn the difference. And the reason is is because most of the time it doesn't matter. If you have, you know, these two words in in context, um, you can usually tell which one you mean. So, I okay, we had the Italian man and multiple. We had some stories, some stash. But these are always, you know, this, they're kind of funny stories that happen sometimes, but they don't happen in every conversation, in every sentence. Um, and so for that reason, you don't need, people often um, don't bother learning these, these um, distinctions naturally because, you know, the brain decides, oh, we don't really need that distinction, you know, never mind. So is there a question? Uh, okay, I don't have the numbers on me here. I mean, it's, it's high 90%. I mean, it's not, it's not 100%. People do make mistakes even as native speakers, but... Um, you would expect to be in the high 90s. Um, maybe a bit less if you have a very, uh, for example, a very rich um, number of vowels or very fine distinctions. You might have a slightly lower, maybe generally it's very, very high for native speakers. Um, I mean, you can see here that these 100% here, I mean, you, can, you would expect the 98 or 100 to be the, you know, the whole table. Sorry? For Oh, so this is percent correct. So they they would be they would be hearing w um, one word, and they'd have to d identify which vowel was it. So you'd just hear, for example, um, uh, head, and then they'd, they'd have to say which vowel did the speaker just say. And this is the percent correct for each um, record, each type of word that they heard. Is that every everything clear then? Okay. Um, so we can see. Okay, immersion doesn't work, but this is you know. Um, just for normal people living in the country. And I'm, I'm not speaking here to a new group of normal people. These are polyglots. These are not normal people, right? You know, what if we go to the country and really pay attention? Or, you know, we, we don't go to the country. We just, you know, find things online. But, you know, really, really pay attention to the sounds and try to learn them. Um, so, yes, much not enough for most people, but polyglots aren't most, uh, most people. Um, so what if we just listen really carefully? And so there was a, a study then a, a few years after that um, looking at, so for example, looking at these minimal pairs. We've had some discussion in previous talks of minimal pairs. They're you know, two words that differ just by a single sound. And you'd have be given one word in a minimal pair. So for example, sheep and ship. And you'd have to decide which one was, was just said. Um, and they would train, um, you would give training to uh, people trying to learn English. Uh, and you'd force them to listen to just one word out of context and say which one of the pair was it. And they actually got, um, so for example, th this particular study, they were teaching Japanese speakers to distinguish R and L, because you don't have this R and L distinction in Japanese. So for example, crowd and cloud. They would just play one of the sounds, and they'd have to, so someone would have to decide which one was said. Um, and with words like these, so crowd and cloud, before training, the, the test subjects had about 58% correct. And after three weeks, and this was, so spread over three weeks, had a total of about 10 hours of training, 15 sessions each of about 40 minutes. They increased by from 58 to 78% correct, which is actually quite a lot. I mean, that's just in a short time. You're just not you know, living somewhere for, you could do this at home, you, could, you don't have to be in the country, this is only in a short time, and you've got quite a significant Im increase in, um, uh, in ability to hear the sound. So this is great, you know, maybe, you know, supposing I'm learning Polish or something, you know, that Polish has you know, this, Shun, sh sh sound. I mean, maybe I can ask my Polish friend here. So, like, szczeka and szczeka. 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 Szczeka, yeah. Szczeka? Yep, that's szczeka. Szczeka. That, that, that one was in between, you kind of. Szczeka. I don't know which we're saying. Yeah, no. We could probably. Szczeka. Do this all day, but. Szczeka. Szczeka. I guess. <laughs> I won't. Um, so maybe I could just get my friend Stash here, and I'll just keep listening to what he says, and keep trying to pr you know pronounce it myself. And over time, I'll you know do this training, and I'll get better. But there was then a an, an follow-up study, 
where they um, tested this, but either from recordings from lots of speakers or just from a single speaker. And so what they found was that if they just practiced listening to a single person, they could be, they'd be really good at hearing how that person spoke, but they wouldn't be able to tell anyone else. So if I did this with Stash, I'd be able to hear the Shaka, or I'd be able to hear Stash saying Shaka and Shaka, but then I couldn't talk to anyone else, or at least I wouldn't understand them. And maybe I don't want to talk to Stash the whole time, so you know it. Um, maybe, I maybe I need to have more speakers. Um, and another fo the, the following year, the same authors then um, showed that the effects of this training last for many months afterwards. So you had this three-week training for 10 hours, and then they tested them, uh, I think it was a year later, or maybe six months later, and uh, they, they still had this boost in performance without having extra training in between. So we can have this uh, short, fairly short amount of time, you can do it at home, um, it lasts for a long time, it helps your performance, and as a final bonus, some other authors then found it actually improves your pronunciation as well. Um, so we ha actually here have a very effective method um, to, to improve your hearing skills. So yeah, just to summarize what Guy was saying, uh, we need to uh, hear words out of context in order to be able to train our listening skills for particular difficult sounds. You need to hear just one word and not the whole sentence. Well, if the whole sentence implies which word, that's not going to help us get better at listening. So we need just one word, and then uh, we need to immediately be told uh, whether we were right or not so that we can correct ourselves and get better. Um, but also, we don't just need it to be one speaker. We need a range of different speakers because uh, they, they have different voices. So we need to get used to the sound uh, spoken by lots of different speakers of different ages and genders and so on. Um, so we looked for this. Th this this research is about 20 years old, so that's quite a long time, I think. Uh, 20 years uh, 20 years ago, this research was done, and we've looked for um, any kind of uh, programs, uh, anything that can do this, um, and the resources available are very limited. Um, so, but basically, we could find um, one which was available in English. Uh, and was and was paid, um, and that was it. Um, and it wasn't very. It, it, it was it was quite hard to find. We had a really tough. We had, we, we really looked for it. Um, so what we decided is that this isn't really isn't enough. And so we made um, our own program, which is Python, um, which is yeah. So it's written in yay. <laughs> We're unveiling it today. Um, so uh, yeah, it's a pun on Python. Did anyone get them? No, no mind. Phone is for phonetics. Anyway, um, so um, so it's it's open source. You can uh, look at the code uh, you, you, if you if you were that way inclined. Uh, you can you know fetch it. Uh, you know do do stuff with it that you want. It's written in uh, the language Python, and uh, it has a what's known as a GNU license, which basically is the same kind of license that you get with um, uh, Anki. Yeah, so it's uh, if any of you are familiar with Anki, this is something that you know you can just uh, add to, and it's a community effort. Um, you can you c uh, we we've made we've made it so that uh, if you want to add recordings, if you're living in a foreign country, for instance, or whatever country you live in, um, you can get native speakers, ask them to say minimal pairs, uh, and then input this into the program, and then other people will be able to use it. So we've we've tried to make this a kind of thing where it can be developed by everyone together. So it's not just one person sitting there recording thousands and thousands of sounds from all the languages in the world. Um, so so uh, it can be extended like that. Oh yeah, now it's time for the demo. Oh, there's a question. Yeah, is that the Git repository name? Um, we have a we do have a link. I'll show you that now. Yeah, we have we have links to uh, where you can download the program and where you can look at the Git repository, uh, which is a code thing. Um, oh, there we go. Yeah, th yeah. So the packaged version means if you don't want to, um, if you just want to use it and you don't care about, well, if you just want to use it, basically, then uh, that's that's uh, that's the tinyurl.com forward slash python, um, and the uh, source code meaning you can actually see what we wrote uh, if you go to that site um, and, and that specific address. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's 0.0, .0 so that's like really the first. Like the first, uh, yeah. Again, sorry. Can I be a beta tester? Yes, you can all be beta testers. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so um, um, well, it 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 does work, but you know. Uh, so <laughs> so um, well, now it's time for the demo, right? There's no more slides. Yay! Um, okay, so we're gonna go with actual practicing first. Should, 
Should we get someone from the audience? This is this is it. There it is. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> that, yeah. So you could choose your language and what kind of thing you want to practice. So you can practice either sitha or e ear. It's got e ear. Or we can ask someone what they want. Does anyone want to have a go in front? Yeah? You do? Okay, come along. Because you're all polygots, you'll get like it all correct and it'll look really pointless, but, but we'll see. Which, which one do you want to practice? Um, between between e, to e it or s but we've got two sets of sounds. So okay. Well, both seems. Okay, in the second one. So, okay, between s and s. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. What are you thinking? Yeah, what, yeah. Are you this is, what are you thinking about, right? So you, um, okay. so you click play to play the sound, and then you'll see the two buttons will have. Ooh. That's the next thing you would submit to Christ before. And then the two buttons at the above will show you the possible answers, so you can. Yeah. Hear yeah you will hear it. Oh. Is it on? Sad. Worth. Moth. Thorn. I'm always easy. <laughs> 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 it says, um, it says thorn and thorn. Again. You can say play again. I mean, it's up to the user if they want to let themselves have the option. Thorn. Wait, wait, yeah, do it again. Thorn. Soon. Thank. Oh, you're doing pretty well here. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to try the uh, other contrast we have? Right, maybe or does someone else want to try the other? Yeah, you got them all right. So, so, you got them all right. Congratulations. <laughs> Someone want to try the other contrast? Yeah. Oh, are you native speaker or? Well, hey, yeah. <laughs> Non-native no, speaker no, no, want to try? It needs an Italian volunteer, I think. Yeah. Or a yeah, yeah, French yeah, or, yeah. 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 But this is British English. Yes. Yes. That's what it says. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, you're not a native speaker of British. <laughs> oh, right, right. Um, Sorry, e. Ian, Ian, eh. So there were well, the two words will always be shown on the screen, so you can. Okay. Break. Break. <laughs> Deeper. Deeper. So it seems that it, I, it was quite easy because my listening comprehension is uh, maybe good, but what about uh, well pronouncing the sound correctly? Um, so as I showed, one of the studies did show that it, um, by improving your listening, you do improve your pronunciation to a certain extent. The trouble with trying to make a software that can uh, making a piece of software that can actually um, test your pronunciation is that processing a speech signal is very complicated, and um, trying to be able to do this so that you could do you could you know adapt it for any contrast. There's a huge amount of processing you need to do to train the system to be able to hear things I itself. At the moment, th all this does is it knows the answer, 
which is just one of two options, and then you choose it. If we wanted to hear something and then uh, predict which one you were saying and tell you how you were saying it wrong, it's a much, much more difficult problem. And that's beyond what we're capable of writing, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, what we exactly? So, what we're going to do now? At the moment, the, the sound samples is just for um, English, but what we wanted to do with this with this uh, software is that it should be extendable, so that people could decide. I want to learn, uh, you know, how to pronounce this language. Can I get people to record themselves? Then I can learn that. So, what we want to do now is we want to get s someone who speaks a language with some difficult contrast. Because everyone here seems to speak English pretty well. I mean, both the people who came up got 100 percent, which is well done to both of you, of course. <laughs> um, Oh, so it, it the wrong answer. Yep. I, th I think the speaker is a bit. <coughs> so if you um, if you press the wrong one, then it just it will show that it's red. So the red is wrong and the green is correct. I, I mean, if you have any if you have any feedback on how the interface could be better, of course we'd we'd just one color. It's disturbing. Okay. <laughs> Ah, yeah. we hadn't thought of color. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. That's a Th th these are all good points to be especially. We tried to make it as pretty as possible, and we were just going on our own sort of. Oh, that's nice. So, uh, if other people have suggestions, that's really good, actually. Okay. So, if in case people at the back couldn't hear, the suggestions are not using green and red because colorblind people wouldn't see the difference, which is a very good point. And maybe having some other kind of feedback, like a, a check or a cross, or maybe a smiley face or something, that so that even if you're colorblind, you'd see the difference. And and people who can see colors would still maybe find the smiley face maybe more encouraging. I don't know. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, oh. Yeah, I, did the studies indicate like how many different recordings of these uh, sounds you would need? So like how many different people, different um, genders, different ages, etc., for it to be a really useful training database. Because if we only had like four, you could just get really good at picking out those four examples and not actually be getting the general. So the question was, um, how many people do you need? How varied does it need to be? I don't know the exact answer. As, uh, I mean, the, the trouble with trying to test that is that you would need to I mean, you could do it, but you'd have to train lots of people with different numbers of speakers and then work out, you know, w at what point does the cutoff come or something. And oh, in, in these studies, they tended to be around um, six people, I think. Uh, it varied from between the different studies exactly how many they used, but um, we have seven so far. <laughs> Another question? Yeah. Um, I think people can hear me, yes? I just wanted to ask how you deal with regional variations in vowel sounds. Uh, so regional variation is, is a problem. Um, so you one, uh, one problem is that between different dialects you might actually have a different sound system, in which case there's no principled way you try to um, you know, have the same training to learn several different dialects at the same time. For ones where you might have um, you know, similar but slightly different pronunciations, you could have a more general set of speakers, but I think in general you'd probably have to have different training sets for different dialects. Oh. Um, we, we, uh, we were aware of this because, you know, maybe the very first, first thing we wrote was English, and then we thought, hang on, a lot of people are interested in American, with ver various, various accents of American English, so we, d we wrote British English. Perhaps we should even write British English something like Southeast or Standard or something. Um, but yeah, the idea is, uh, again, because this is extendable, if you want to learn how to speak in a Yorkshire accent, you get loads of people uh, saying uh, difficult contrast in a Yorkshire accent, and then you make one called, which we'll show you in a second, this is the next part of the demo, um, uh, you'll make a language called Yorkshire English, or something like that, and then you'll put in the contrast and it would, we'll show you how that works. But basically, it just in the same way as you could add um, standard German or, uh, or, or Polish or, or whatever, um, then uh, you could, uh, similarly, you could add um, which region you're talking about. So there's no restriction on that. No, sorry, you haven't asked. Yes. Uh, couldn't you use Forvo? I don't know if it's open source, but um, Forvo.com. 
Yeah, somebody mentioned this to us at the beginning of the conference. I leapt with joy. I, th I think we will. Yes, I, th I think we'll like get Forvo resources because I think they're free and stuff. <laughs> That's going to be an excellent resource. We'll be able to build this a lot from that. Uh, well, yesterday I had a talk with you about this, and I just wanted to let you know there is another polyglot, uh, and he also uh, created something like you, uh, exactly based on the same re uh, research. You just mentioned, you just want to let me know, maybe you can contact with me and do this together. It's Ga Gabriel Weiner, I'm just checking. He's creating the application for Antia, I think he wants to do. And it's exactly what he's doing. Okay, that's the same idea, the same research. I read about the research on his blog. Oh, right. Okay, what's the name? So, uh, I'll show you. Weiner, W. Yes. Gabriel Weiner, W Y N E R. W Y N E R. He's not for a second. Okay, he's Gabriel, a member of Singer, Gabriel and he's a polyglot as well. Oh, cool. Okay, so we haven't heard of... Okay, that's... Uh, his website is forever.com. Uh, anyway, I'll let... I'll let okay, yeah, yeah, thanks very much. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, yes? I'm, I'm wondering um, if you guys would consider using IPA instead of uh, the, the E and the F. Uh, yes, I mean, uh, yeah, yes. Basically it, depends on what you Basically, it depends on what users prefer. So we, that, that's another thing we should probably think about is whatever language learners will, I mean, some language learners might be put off by RPA, so it, it depends, I guess. Like may maybe we will. Or we can use both, perhaps, yeah. Um, anyway. So to answer some of these questions, I'm going to come to the next part of the demo, is how, to, how you can take the software and add a new contrast. So for example, with British English, you could decide, okay, maybe we want to rename that. We could type in the IPA here, and then the, the user would see the IPA. Um, so there's no problem with that. We wrote this because we weren't sure how many people would be familiar with IPA. We wrote that, you know, a small i, then a small capital i, people might think, w what's that? Or, you know, the, a theta for the first sound, maybe. But, I mean, you could do that. There's, there's no restriction on that. Um, so now what we'd like to do is we'd like to get someone from the audience who speaks a language with a difficult contrast, other than English, and try to add this to the database to show how someone could do that for themselves. We could Polish or maybe we mentioned um, people were mentioning that the, the tones in Swedish that could be another option. Um, we could record that one. <laughs> it was a hand. Sorry, the Mongolian. Does Mongolian have an? I Should we have Mongolian? <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's add Mongolian. Is it standard Mongolian? Yeah. <laughs> 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 it is standard Mongolian. <laughs> So, so what you do is you, you put in a new language, and then, for instance, your contrast might be e, i, or s, th, or um, sh, sh, or something like that. So that's what we mean by contrast. Uh, there are two different contrasts we want to show. It's just this one type of. Yeah. Okay. So now let's. So now, now we need to record her. We need to record you saying words. So you have some minimal pairs. They're the whole and whole, right? Oh. Okay. Okay. This is a this is a program called Prat where you can record stuff. You you could use whatever you want to record with. It doesn't matter. 
sorry, just while they're trying to record, just an announcement for everyone staying in the hotel hostel. You have to check in before 10 a.m. tomorrow if you don't want to pay an extra night. Check out, yeah, sorry, <laughs> check out before 10 a.m. Otherwise, you have like to pay extra. So it's a tip to keep in mind. Be quiet, please, we can record. <laughs> going to cut out the two words and save them separately. You don't have to do it. This, this isn't part of our program. This is just like we're making two recordings. Hush. 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 Thank you. Uh, thank you. There's some uh, software that's available for for a fee, actually quite a large fee, and it's kind of crappy software, and it's a little bit of the reverse. Where if I'm if I'm learning, I start learning Russian, for example, and I'm a native English speaker, I can go in and say, I'm a native English speaker, I'm I'm wanting to learn r Russian. Uh, these are going to be the areas where I'm likely going to have issues with certain sounds, and sort of help people hone in on a, a, a set of sounds that they could start with. Um, I'm wondering if you had any thoughts about creating something like that. Do you mean it makes suggestions for which sounds you should be learning? I can imagine that you have like an entire list of 50 different things to choose from and you don't necessarily know, well, do I need to do this one or do I need to do this one or how much time should I spend learning these particular sounds versus these other ones? I think that should be quite easy to add because that's basically a suggestion of just a su so yeah so that's something that we could incorporate a suggestion of if you're learning this new language here's a place you should start yeah that that that's yeah that's um that's really good idea actually yeah we could we could make that I think packaging this as an assessment, so it, if people want to do self-assessments, like where do I start? What, what do I, what do I, you know, have some sort of pointer? And I, I think um, the software that's available is costly and crappy. And I think I, it's, it's been on my mind for a couple of years to work on a project to open source that. I just think it's ridiculous that people have to pay for that. So, uh, but maybe just for a start, just to indicate, oh. Um, Italian speakers usually have problem with this minimal pair in this language, or a German speaker usually has difficulties in distinguishing between these um, sounds. It that could be done in, in writing, just for a start, before you go ahead in, in a blog post or in a PDF download or whatever. So I guess that would be very helpful for most of the people. Yeah, that can, that, that can thank you for that suggestion. Yes, I think we'll definitely do that. So thank you for all these suggestions. It's really um, helpful. But it's exactly this kind of um, dialogue that we'd like to have, that we really want this, this software to become part of a community effort. It's not just that we've made something, we want people to use it. We want people to get involved and actually um, you know, use this how they want to use it. People to advise each other, you know, these are the kinds of sounds that they're difficult, that they want to learn, that they need to learn, and to um, really build something out of this. So you know, th um, thank you for all your, for your interest and your comments. So the question was if there's more than two options. At the moment, the software doesn't do that, but we're planning that for a future release. We, we wanted to make sure everything was working before um, adding more options. So we, we're just going to finish the, now that the screen's come back on.
so uh, we had we added the the contrast here, and I maybe I should we can re rename this data if we need to. So we can then um, we have now a recordings panel. This shows all the recordings we have in our database of different people saying different sounds. So I'll tell you, you know, here's the name of the file. We've got the answer, which language they're speaking, the na person's name, the name, so you can keep track of you know how many people did I have speaking this. So for example, I could say, okay, what was that one? And we can check how it sounds. We can then, you know, edit. Oh, I misheard that one. We should change the data. And then we can say, okay, we're going to add these Mongolian files. So, um, since I don't know how to spell these, I've just named them. Uh, it was a fricative one, I think. <laughs> um, how do you spell? Is there a standard spelling for Mongolian with Latin script or? It doesn't come for pronunciation. Okay, I'll just say this word. The answer is fricative. <laughs> Freak, fricative. This one's freaky. Sorry? No, no, it's fine. So that's that's the answer. This is obviously that's the word. That no, <laughs> and the. These typings will hold the mic. Yeah. So standard Mongolian goes in there. And then here we write who the speaker is. Uh, and then, uh, oh yeah, and also you can select more than one file at once. But yeah, this time we just selected one at a time. Um, so now he's going to put in the other file, approximate dot wav. <laughs> And then you can just say, I want all of the these ones that I selected, I want them all to be said by Yanja and all to be standard Mongolian. So it saves you from having to type everything. That's good when you have to write British English uh, 600 times, which I almost did. Um, well, I, I didn't actually. But <laughs> uh, and then you save it. Um, so here you say that in standard Mongolian, we have a difference between fricative and <laughs> approximate. It's a really weird example. All right. We would have the, if we had a better spelling, if I could type IPA, I would want to put the IPA. I'm not quite sure. So, I mean. You can write uh, regular L and slimy L. The words are all the same. So, apparently, there's no standard spelling. But so, I think probably in this case, it would be better to type the IPA. But um, I'm not quite sure how to type IPA quickly. So, I'm going to just do this for the time being. But, you know, you could go back and rename these things. Now we can search to check that we got it. Yep. So there's the different. There's the that. That's the distinction we've added. Okay. So now we can go away from it. Well, have you saved it, guy? Right. Okay. Now we can go away from there and go back into the original. This is that's something different. So um, go back into here. Okay. So now we've got to open it again. And we can choose standard Mongolian. And we can choose the two L's, and we can. Hi. Which one was that? <laughs> <laughs> Just guess. Hi. I think it's an approximate. I don't know. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Way better. Unless I name the files wrong. <laughs> of course, yeah. So then you can, well, you can play the next, which will be the same one, because we only have one recording Hi. at the moment. Hi. That was a fricative. Uh, that was approximate. Same. Was that the same file? Yeah. Because it's random, uh, we don't know which one it is. That's yeah, yeah. Same. Oh, you've got better now. Hi. He's better at this now. So then, yeah. Hi. Yeah, so we only have one. Hi. Uh, <laughs> but if you keep going, then eventually you'll hit the other one. Well, I think so. Well, just. Hi. There you go. Right. It's random, so it just randomly chose the same one three times. I could also um, misanalyze mis the sound. I mean, I don't know if it actually was the right way to analyze <laughs> Sorry? Hush. Well, anyway, Hush. so you've seen that we've added um, 
we, we added a new language and we added some new f sounds and then this is just like we can train Mongolian now. Although it would be better if we had like a few more words and uh, a few more speakers. But you get the idea, right? You just do that again. Uh, or you just like do that with more sounds. Um, so that's how we input the first 700 or so uh, English sounds. Um, so, uh, yes? Stored locally, or are you going to have them somewhere uh, online where you can just download the sets like in Hang, for example? So currently it's stored locally. Oh, sorry. So the, the English files you um, we heard playing, those are already in the, the, the GitHub repository. So no, if you download, you already have the English sounds that we were playing earlier. Um, at the moment, we don't have a nice interface to upload things easily and to download, not in the same way that Anki does. I mean, that's something that we would like to produce. If actually, if anyone here knows more about that kind of web hosting stuff, that would be helpful because we, we're both new to that kind of thing. Um, but so at the moment, um, you'd only be able to share things sort of just person to person. So the, through the GitHub repository, we can distribute all the English files, but um, yeah, we don't have a nice interface like Anki. Yeah, and this is definitely something we would like to improve and uh, make easier. Yeah, then you probably would need some kind of system of making sure that it's correct or maybe voting because you don't want to have something online that's not correct or that might not be well described. I think that would be a trick to make sure that you have good quality recordings and are well described. So the, the question there was then about the quality of the recordings. So, so one method might be, for example, with Anki, you can, um, is everyone here familiar with Anki? Should I explain what that is? People any unfamiliar with it? So Anki is um so it's a, a piece of software that can help people say learn say learn vocabulary for example that's probably the most relevant thing in, in this community um, where you have electronic flashcards where you have one side of the it'll show you a, you know a question or say a piece of vocabulary and then uh, when you click show answer then you can say whether you got it right or wrong and it will keep showing you um, you know you get to see whether you got it right or wrong and you can download decks from other people. And so I think it's in this case, um, we could have something like, a, not a deck, maybe an album of sounds. And um, we could have people you know, curating a different album so that someone says, okay, well, I've got this set of recordings from, say, for English or for Mongolian or whichever language. Other people could then propose to add more, uh, add more recordings. They could then add them to their album and then check they're all correct and then you know, upload that and that kind of thing. Um, I don't think, well, I we could have some kind of voting system. I think that gets into a lot more overhead, I mean, that would be one possibility, but um, yeah, that's not, the, that's not the first thing we're doing right now. <laughs> if you get the web thing working, then, then yeah, so once the web thing is working, we'll probably think about that, right? So, uh, we had another question here, I think. No, it was just about the, uh, the voting and um, I think just low tech, if somebody's, if you solicit um, feedback, you say, so if you see, if you hear an incorrect sound, send an email or create an issue and this is how you do it uh, and get yeah. Yeah. So the suggestion there was to um, you can have a system of flag issues or send an email or something to f correct mistakes yeah so um, that was the software so that just to conclude before we then open final for final questions um, ooh, what's happened here okay my computer's not happy <laughs> We're going to create the uh, kind of online interface that people can contribute. Yes. Like oh well, uh, so that's like something we. I that, mean, that's I mean a high priority thing. Upload um, the yeah. recording. So like you, you, you say, we we in, in need of the these pairs to be recorded. Uh, so native, please come and you know submit your recording. Yeah. So yeah, we are we are going to make a web interface uh, or get someone to help us to make a web interface possibly. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's, uh, so people can add to this web thing. People can take uh, from it what they want, so that um, you know everyone's effort can be put in one place. Um, yes. It's a quick question: Do you have a, a readme file that has a contributions and, and things that you need, like front end developer? That would be a very fast way to get help. Ah, ah okay. We, oh, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. I we have, we have a readme file that says this is our license, okay. and I it's written by me. I'm a technical writer. I can give you a little assistance. Okay, thanks very much. Um, so, um, so people want to get involved with this because as I said before, we really want this to be part of a community effort so that um, people can do with it what they think needs to be done. So if you want to test the software and just want to give feedback, what could look better, what features you'd like to have, by all means download the software, try it out. If you want to add content, you know, record, um, record 
words in your own native language or help, you know, there's this Forvo thing, we could use that to get content perhaps as another way. So, or, or generally, if you want to develop the software in some way, because as we said, it's open source. Anyone is free to download it, edit it, um, publish their own version. Um, by all means, we, will we, we encourage people to do that, definitely. Um, so, thank you. so finally, thank you for listening here. But finally, the, the download links, both the source code and the um, package version, and our email addresses if you want to get in touch. Thank you. And any final questions before we finish up? Are the email addresses in the readme file? The email addresses are uh, the readme. I think the readme. The readme. The readme. The if you click on the program about, they're they're there. Um, so there's, there's an about button in the menu. Yeah. Any other? Qu yes. Sorry. Would it make sense to practice the sounds themselves without a word, so just the sound? Ah. Th um, so the question was uh, if we could practice them without a word at all. Um, they a sound needs to be in some kind of context. Pronouncing a consonant, for example, without any surrounding um, sounds at all is, is very unnatural. And will be if you just hear that, it would be difficult then to generalize that to uh, words in context, which is another reason why you want to have a varied selection, not just of speakers, actually of different contexts. So for example, if you want to have this um, e -e distinction, you want to have a lot of different words so you can hear the e after different consonants, before different consonants. Um, pronouncing, I mean, then the question, maybe not just, so I think the co context is def definitely important. Whether you could have nonsense words, so not just real words, but um, just random sounds, you know, instead of sheep, we had uh, sheeg or something, that's not a word. Sheeg and shig, right? Those, neither of those are words. You could have that. We decided to stick to real words. That way, uh, I, th I feel like it's more. If I think it feels more fun as a learner that you're thinking you're actually looking at real words, not just random sounds. But you, I mean, there's there's no reason why that wouldn't help you hear the difference. Um, but some kind of context would be would be good. You don't have translations there as well, or just say IPA on the original writing. Um, another suggestion was to um, add, provide translations. We we thought of this, and we haven't added it here, but. Because then you need to decide what language to translate it into. We just wanted to provide it for English. But yes, that's a definitely a good idea. <laughs> yes, so some kind of database of translations for different languages. You can pick, I'm you know, a speaker of this language. I'm learning this one. It will translate them for you. Uh, it starts to be you know, more complicated. But yes, that's definitely a good idea. <laughs> um, what about like adding images under it? Obviously, you can't do it with every kind of word. But for example, you have sheep and ship. And then you know, when you get it right, it comes up with a sheep, ah. and then that will fix the, the image in your head, so it helps you as you're learning the language. You know. Suggestion to add images with the, with the, uh, with the words. Um, I guess we could, that. so instead of having the two buttons being the written words, there could be two buttons being pictures. I guess that would be quite helpful, but um, well, not what you meant, after. Once you get it right, it'll come up with the answer, and it'll show you correct and a picture of a sheep. And then it then so you you associate the sound with the image, and then when, then it will help you fix that in your brain. I see. Okay. Sh yes. <laughs> so sheet and a shit. Then it has a picture of a shit. If you get it right. Then. <laughs> and then it also makes it. I mean, that it could be possible, but then also for abstract concepts. I mean, um, it might be difficult to work out what the picture should or be. Verbs. Or verbs. You know. Um, Yeah, deeper. I mean, ha having a pi one picture of a deeper, you'd have to have like two things, one of which is deeper than the other. I, <laughs> I mean, maybe, but I think it might be difficult to work out the details for. I, uh, Easter egg for such words. Um, yes, if anyone wants to code this and provide the pictures, by all means. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Do you also have a sort of like a feature that allows you to say, when you're in a country, you could go around and like record native speakers to say the words you want, and then use that as the file. So yeah. you know, to sort of say, write it down and say, oh, would you mind just speaking this word? Well, that's exactly the kind of use we we think would be really good. Uh, you don't need uh, we you, we don't need our software to record sounds. You can most computers I think now have a built-in recording. You just or, or phones or whatever. You just say record this and then it will be a file on your computer and then you just stick it in so we don't need so the recording doesn't need to be done in this program you just need the so you record it somehow on your computer or on whatever device 
Oh yeah, so sorry. If I'm not sure if I mis misunderstood your question, but if you're in that country and you want to do that, then that's great. Thanks a lot. This is really this is what we want people to do, right? So for, for individual learners, for example, so you're traveling around, so you use this like an app and then go, okay, I want to test all these pairs. I'll go around recording every day from different people, and then you come back and then it's now saved on your memory as like, okay, sheep, sheep, sheep. You know, you get some random person to say it. And then do that. Yeah. <laughs> We'd be very happy. <laughs> Probably a maybe a final c question. Just a short comment that uh, although it's possible to use any kind of audio recording software, it's much easier for a user if you don't have to fuss about with the file system. If you just had a, a record button in your app and people just speak it straight into the app. Yes, that would be a it could be a good extension. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 